OpenAI's function calling API lets you generate structured data with ChatGPT. So if you want plugin-like functionality outside of the ChatGPT interface, you want to follow along. I'll be covering all of these topics, and if you want a written version of this tutorial, I'll leave that in the description. As I said before, function calling lets you reliably get structured data back from the GPT models. For example, you might ask for JSON, and instead of getting just the JSON, you get you know something before and something after, but you want just the JSON every single time. That's where the GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613 and GPT 40613 models come in. These will reliably return just JSON. So let's look at this quick example. You might have a message like, what is the weather like in Louisville, Kentucky? And based on your available functions, like get current weather, get historical weather, get forecast weather, and so on, um, you want to figure out how to actually call that based on that user message. So you pass the message as well as the functions and some extra metadata along to the uh, 0613 APIs, and you'll get back JSON every single time. And it has a function call, which is the function that it thinks you should call based on the input and the parameters to call it. You can actually select which function you want it to uh, fill in the data for. I'll get into that later though. Now let's actually use the API. I'll show you how to do this with Python. You need to pip install OpenAI. If you haven't, get your ChatGPT API key. That's going to be exported in OpenAI underscore API underscore key as an environment variable. If you don't know how to do this, it's just export OpenAI underscore API underscore key, then the variable. So this is pretty much the same as a normal completion. You have to import OpenAI at the top. We're also going to be using JSON, so import JSON. This is the core of it. Main difference here is functions and function call. Uh, so, and then also model. The model is GPT 3.5 Turbo 0613. There is also, of course, the GPT-4 equivalent, uh, which is, you know, just GPT-4-0613. And then the unique thing is functions and function call. So functions is a list of the functions that are available. And you have the name, description, and parameters. I believe it says parameters is optional, but uh, I don't believe it is. You probably always want to have parameters, description, and the name. So we have this get current weather function up here, and it just returns the same thing every time. Basically, it takes a location and a unit, uh, just returns this JSON. This is just for an example here. And then you can see here I have the description, which the API is going to use to determine, you know, if this was multiple functions, which one to use. And then also we have if, the, if we have this auto uh, parameter set then it may or may not actually suggest a function call. Uh, I have a prompt in the article that you can use to generate this JSON schema, uh, but it's pretty straightforward with the name, description, parameters, and then you know the different types of the parameters and if they're required or not. So ch check out the prompt in the article if you want to generate this yourself, uh, or you can do it manually. Then going to function call equals auto. So it's auto by default. Um, and if you set it to auto, then you may or may not uh, get a function suggestion. You can set this manually. I'll go over that a little bit in more detail later. So let's go ahead and call this and see what happens with auto set with these parameters. As you can see in choices, uh, and content is null. Normally for a you know regular completion, um, this would be set to the ChatGPT response, but instead we have function call, and function call is set uh, to the you have the name here, which is get current weather because it's saying that we should use the get current weather function, and then arguments which are the arguments for that function. You also see that the finish reason is function call. Before we get into the more advanced usage and troubleshooting, let me just show you how you could actually call the function given that you have this response from ChatGPT. You can see I'm running this interactively with Python tag i, then the file name. So I'm going to add this code right here. And all this code is doing, it's creating a dictionary where the name of the function maps to the actual function. And then what I'm going to do here is extract the data from the ChatGPT response. response specifically the name and the arguments. So that's gonna be the name and arguments here. 
I have to use json.loads to load this into the argument. And function to call, here I'm extracting the function that we need to call from the dictionary because we have the name mapping to the function variable. We can just do this right here. Uh, the function name from the API it will extract it from the dictionary. And then we can call it like a normal function uh, and pass it the arguments that ChatGPT gave us. So I can do this real quick. I'll copy this in since I ran this interactively and show you what happens when I do this. Uh, so we have again, name arguments. I'll paste this in and we'll see the response. As you can see, got the expected response uh, from the function that we defined up here. All right, now let's finally dive deeper and go over these different things. Let's go over the function call parameter options, multiple functions at once in a single request, any structured data and non-existent functions, as well as generating the function call schema. So right here, as you can see, I have the different function calls and I have this set to none. And what none is going to do, none means that the model does not call a function and it just responds normally to the end user. So it'll be a regular completion. So let's see what this looks like here when we have this set to none. I'm passing the Golden Gate Bridge as a suspension bridge, spanning the Golden Gate, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then my functions here, which is process proper nouns, it uh, just processes an array of proper nouns. And I'll get into why I'm doing this specific function in a second. But function call is none, and this is what we get right here. We get a message back with content. So content is for regular completions. It is actually valid at JSON, it looks like. But the reason that we don't want to do this if we expect structured data is this. As I said before, there could be some data before and after that is not JSON. So if you were to you know, try to load that, you would fail. In this case, it would work, but maybe it's inconsistent. So this could be dangerous. Now, there's also auto, and auto does kind of what you might expect. So auto will just choose between a regular completion or calling the function, just like plugins work, just how plugins work. So if it thinks that a plugin or a function would be useful, it will say that you should call that. And you can see which one it is by the finish reason. You can also just check to see if the function call is present here but finish reason is another way. So let's call this with auto and see what happens. As you can see, finish reason is function call. And also we have the function call here, which is you know process proper nouns with the arguments set right here. So that's great. Um, but there's also one more way. Uh, maybe you know for a fact you want a function to be called. You don't want chat GPT to maybe call it, maybe not. And in that case, that's where a function call set to the function name comes in. So you can specifically say, I know for a fact, I want to call process proper nouns. Just give me back the arguments for that function. So let's call this one more time. And it's not going to be any different. As you can see, it did call process proper nouns and it did give you the correct arguments back. Quick note, I should clarify that the finish reason is only function call when you're using auto and it decides to use a function call. In this case, since we're specifying function call to be uh, process proper nouns, this function specifically, we're still getting the finish reason stop. And real quick, if you're going to pause here and look at the other finish reasons, it's right here. There are a lot of cases where you need structured data from ChatGPT and you don't need to write actual functions to use the function API. So let's go over an example of that. Let's say that you're creating a web scraper and you're looking at the first sentence in the Golden Gate Bridge article on Wikipedia. This is the first sentence. You can extract the proper nouns from this article just by creating this dummy process proper nouns function. You don't actually need to uh, write it. If you don't know what a proper noun is, quick English les lesson. Uh, it's just a noun that serves as the name for a specific place, person, or a thing. So, you know, that's like London or OpenAI or Nick. So those are proper nouns. And if you look at this sentence, that's Golden Gate Bridge, Golden Gate, and San Francisco Bay and Pacific Ocean. So 
in order to extract those, you can just come up with this dummy function uh, and that will be enough. So let's go look at this code right here. So I have this right here, it's commented out. It's not a real function. You don't need to actually write anything here. And so right here, I'm defining the name, the, the description. It just processes an array of proper nouns this is kind of just hinting at ChatGPT that this is what the input should be. And for parameters, you can see it's nouns. Description of the parameter is just an array of proper nouns to be processed. So just with that, I didn't actually define a real function. I can call this function and you'll see as before that I will get all the proper nouns extracted from it. I have arguments, nouns, and Golden Gate bridge golden gate san francisco bay and pacific ocean as expected there are a lot of cases where you actually need to make multiple function calls at once so for example what if a user says what events should i go to in san francisco on may 25th based on the weather if you have a get weather and a get events function you know which one do you call well you kind of need to call both so you can emulate multiple function calls with a single request shout out to prenova for coming up with this solution here but basically, all you need to do is pretend that you have a multi-func function. As I said before, you don't actually need to have these functions. You're just figuring out how to get structured data back from the API. So we're going to specify uh, that the name is multi-func. Down here, we're specifying it here. So the description doesn't matter. I believe I could drop that. Uh, but in the properties, we this is basically just what you would put for the get weather function alone. Um, so instead we have properties is get weather and instead of get weather, you know, we have all the specific parameters for that function itself, which are, you know, location. And uh, for get events, we also have, we have location and date, uh, you know, all the types, you can look up JSON schema. If you don't know how to work this and again, I'll get to my prompt in a second to show you how you can uh, automatically generate this with chat GPT. But basically, we're just saying that the required parameters for multifunc are all of the parameters for get weather and all of the parameters for get events. So after we do that, I'll run this. And as you can see in the output, now we have the arguments for multifunc, which again is get weather and also get events. So get events maps to its actual arguments right here, which has the city and it actually hallucinated the date. But you know, since it's structured, you don't have to worry about the hallucination here, because you can do, you know, get weather, city, and you don't even need to bother with the date, pretend it's not there. Get events uh, has the city as well as the date. If you want to generate the function called JSON schema quickly, you can just use chat GPT for that. I have this prompt in the article I linked in the description. So I just copied this, pasted this. I have my function right here that I added at the end. It generated this JSON schema for me. Back in the code, I added, added my schema for the function. This is the function right here. It just squares a number. And then I'm asking it, what is the seven squared, which isn't even a proper sentence I just realized because uh, I have a kind of a typo there. But let's see if it works anyway. I'll run it. As you can see, arguments are num7, so it did work. Here's some general troubleshooting advice that might help. I did see a lot of people saying that there was uh, erroneously suggestions for a function called to Python, which doesn't exist. Here's one of the posts I saw on the community OpenAI forum. And some solutions for this could be specifically specifying a function to call with the function call parameter instead of maybe using auto. This could also apply to any other issues you have. You know, if, chat, if the API is not uh, using the function you want, obviously you can specifically say, use this one, this, this function in particular. Uh, you know, if it's saying to use Python, you can try to use this as well. If that doesn't work, you can also uh, try to add a dummy Python function to your functions list uh, with a description to kind of like poison that function. For example, here I added the Python function with a description 
this function doesn't exist. You can try other variations like the world's going to end if you call this function to try to avoid that. Then you can also use the GPT-40613 function calling API or model. Um, not sure how much better this will be, but that's uh, one tip. And then also variations, obviously, for your function names and descriptions. If you, uh, you know, more descriptive or use different language, uh, maybe that's like more commanding, it could improve your results.